Now, the meeting app that we're going to create in this in this demo and throughout this uh, screencast series is going to use a Microsoft Graph to obtain the meeting details. Um, in order and in order to do this, I'm, the app is going to use an Azure Active Directory application with the necessary permissions and configured to support single sign-on. So that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create all the stuff that we need in Azure AD. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Edge and go to ad.portal.azure.com and I'm already signed in as my test account, Megan, uh, Megan Bowen. So I'm going to come over here to my over to Azure AD and I'm going to go ahead over into the app registrations We'll make this a little bit bigger and I'll say I'm going to create a new registration. So the name of my app is going to be called My Teams App. And for the supported account types, I'm going to choose multi tenant. That's a requirement uh, as we discussed previously. Now, for the redirect URI, I'm going to set this, uh, the platform, to web. And then the URL I'm going to use has to be an HTTPS uh, endpoint. So I'm going to say HTTPS. And now this is going to be, this is the part I need to explain something uh, for a moment. So Microsoft Teams and specifically uh, Microsoft's Azure Active Directory, it requires the redirect URI to be a fully routable um, and secure endpoint. Um, now during development, you know, we're normally working on localhost and this can be a little challenging because I need a fully routable uh, endpoint to be able to do this for me. So I'm going to use this tool here called ngrok. So I'm going to have just say replace.ngrok.io slash auth dash end. And that's the endpoint that we're going to use uh, for our authentication. Now you notice the piece there where it says replace. So what ngrok is, ngrok is this little utility, um, a free utility that you can use to create a, uh, a fully routable uh, secure endpoint that exposes your local host uh, web server that you're using for testing and development. Um, the challenge is, is that Ingrok, it's a free tool, is that every time you spin Ingrok up, it's gonna create a random subdomain uh, for, your, um, uh, for your environment. So every time I start and stop Ingrok, I'm gonna have to replace that little string where it says replace with the domain name um, and the subdomain that is going to be used here to be able to test my app. So that's something you're going to have to remember. Um, just keep it, keep note wherever you see me using the ingrok.io domain, I'd have to come back and I'd have to re, I'd have to change my um, uh, that URL every time uh, I restart ingrok. Now the commercial version or the licensed version of ingrok allows you to reserve a domain name. So I'm going to use mine just because it's gonna simplify things a little bit, but just know that that URL right there, that uh, that subdomain, yours is gonna change if you're using the free version of Ingrok. All right, it's just a little, uh, you pay just a little bit, it makes it a little bit easier, it makes the developer experience a little bit simpler. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit register to go ahead and create our app. And now we have our app. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open up VS Code and I want to make sure, use this as like a little notepad to keep track of a few things. So I'm going to create a new file here. I want to get the directory ID or the tenant ID. So I'll just call this the TID. I need the client ID, which is the ID of my application. So I'll come back over here and grab the client ID. That's this one. I'm going to need both of those in a minute. And then I'm going to need the client secret um, as well. So let's go ahead and let's grab that client secret or actually before we do that let's go configure our authentication so i'm going to go to authentication and what i'm going to do is under the authentication uh, page here you can see i've already got my redirect is already set up i'm going to scroll down and i need to make sure that i uh, under the implicit grant and hybrid flow section i need to check off both the access tokens and id tokens um, the next thing i need to do I'll go ahead and hit save is I need to go get my a secret for my application. So for the app to authenticate with Azure ID, it needs both an, a client ID and a client secret. So we have the client ID, now we need a secret. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select create a new secret and I'm just gonna leave all the defaults and just click add to go ahead and grab my secret. Now I need to copy this down because this is only gonna be shown to me 
one time. Actually, that's not the right one. That's my secret right there is the value. Okay, so that secret's only gonna be shown one time. The second I leave the screen and come back, uh, it's never gonna be shown. So I would have to recreate a new secret if I ever wanted, if I ever left the screen, didn't keep track of what that was. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to configure the API permissions for my app. So I'm gonna come over here to my API permissions. And by default, it's already got the user read permission. So I'm gonna leave that one there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is that when Microsoft Teams requests an access token from Azure AD for the currently signed in user, it only is gonna be able to get the most basic permission that identifies who the user is. So to enable this to happen, I need to add a few basic ID, uh, open ID permissions to my app. So I'm gonna come over and say, let's add a permission. These are all gonna be Microsoft Graph permissions and they're delegated permissions. And I'll choose email, offline access, open ID, and profile. This is just the basic information about the current user. Now, the next thing I need to do is, as we saw when we talked about uh, in, our, in, the, in the slides a few minutes ago, um, is I also need to go through and grant two other permissions for my app. Um, I need to grant permissions to first get the chat ID. So I'll say chat. I need to get the chat ID, and I need to get the uh, online meetings. I need to do, be able to do a read permission on online meetings. So I'll add both of those permissions um, as well. Now, to simplify the process of testing our app, I'm gonna go grant user consent to the permissions for all the users in our organization. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the, um, I'm gonna say grant admin consent, and then I'll say yes. And that'll grant permissions that'll go ahead and consent to everything. Now, I'm also gonna come over here into manage permissions I'm gonna, for user consent. I'm gonna to go to my enterprise applications and I'm gonna to go to the user consent tab and grant admin consent for Contoso. So what this is going to do is I'm gonna pick Megan Bowen and what this is gonna say is that it's, it, these permissions are requested by my organization. So it's read chat messages, maintain access to user data, sign in and read the online meetings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm then gonna go ahead and select accept. And so that's gonna grant that permission um, to all the users in our organization. Now the next step is to configure my apps API for Microsoft Teams. So I'm gonna do that by under the manage tab. I'm gonna come over to, let's go back to our app and I'm gonna to go to the expose an API page. Now for the application ID URI, I'm gonna set this value. And by default, it says API and it has the ID of our Azure AD app. But what I need to do is I need to add in something at the beginning. I need to say replace.ingrok.io at the very beginning. So that's gotta be the domain of where my app is hosted uh, or my web app is hosted has to be at the beginning of this. So for me, that's gonna be just my name. Now remember, if you're not using the commercial version of Ingrok, you need to make sure that you change this if you restart Ingrok. So there's the ID of my the um, ID of my API. I'm then gonna go in and I'm gonna add a scope. So I'm gonna add in a brand new permission and this scope is gonna be the access underscore as user and admins and users can consent to this scope and the title of this scope is gonna be teams can access the user's profile and the admin consent description says teams can call the app's web APIs as the current user. And then for the user consent, I'll say Teams can access the user profile and make requests on the user's behalf. And for the description, uh, it'll be Teams can call this app's APIs with the same rights as the user. And then the status is gonna be enabled and I'm gonna say add a scope. Now the last step is to go ahead and pre-authorize Microsoft Teams clients that the app's API is going to trust. So this means that users are not gonna be asked to consent to specific permissions or scopes that are exposed by my API, specifically the scope that we just created here um, called the access as user. 
Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go add a client application and I'm gonna paste in two different GUIs. So the first one is for the Microsoft Teams mobile and desktop clients. And I got that from the Microsoft Teams developer documentation. So I'll go ahead and check this off and say that this is a scope that they're allowed to have access to. And then the second one that we're gonna add is going to be for the Microsoft Teams web client. And then I'll go ahead and add that application. Okay, so now at this point, I've registered the Azure AD application that can be used by Microsoft Teams apps to support single sign-on for our users. And while the app's been registered, remember, I may need to come back and make a few changes depending on features that my custom Microsoft Teams app is gonna need and the whole thing with the domain uh, that changes using the developer tool Ingrop. Now, when I create my Microsoft Teams app, remember, again, as I just said, you're gonna need to revisit this application to update the places where I entered the URL where the application is hosted. And this is true both during the development and when the application is deployed to production. So anywhere that I had entered replace.ingrok.io, or in my case here, my name.ingrok.io, I'm gonna need for that to be updated with the location of the web app that implements the custom Microsoft Teams app. So my Azure AD app that I registered only has the most basic permissions to identify the user and the permissions for the meeting. It also contains Microsoft Graph permissions to obtain uh, basic information about the user and the meeting. And if my custom Teams app needed additional permissions to the Microsoft Team or the Microsoft Graph or to another app or another endpoint, I'm gonna need to come back and add those to the Azure AD apps registration.